Let's look at the first part of the character connection composition. That first part is writing the connection. The connection task states, you will discuss the myth character and compare him or her to yourself. This discussion will feature a trait you and the character share with evidence from the myth. Basically, that means that you are telling the reader which character you're talking about, what that character's trait is, and how that character relates to you with evidence from the literature. Let's look at the model example. The model example contains all three parts of the connection assignment, but we're only discussing part one right now, the connection. Look at videos for parts two and three to discuss the future development of this paper. In the first two paragraphs, I've developed the first step, the connection. Let's read paragraph one. In J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series of novels, one character rises above the rest as a model of responsibility, compassion, and cleverness. This character serves as an invaluable friend and mentor to Harry, and without him, Harry would never have grown to defeat the challenge of Voldemort. I am talking, of course, about Severus Snape. Yes, Snape is the Hogwarts teacher that helps Harry the most of any other. Like him, I help students at McCor grow into fine young men and women. The first paragraph is a bit creative. I intend to inject a little bit of humor into it through irony. Those who know the Harry Potter novels know that Snape is by no means a nice guy. However, despite my humor and my creativity in writing, I've accomplished a few distinct tasks that you should accomplish as well. And they're very simple. First, I've identified the literature. You notice that I am talking about the Harry Potter series of novels, not simply one novel or short story. I use italics to identify Harry Potter because it is a long work, a novel. I also identify the author, J.K. Rowling. You should identify the author and the name of the story. Of course, since you're dealing with a sh short story of myth, you should use quotation marks to identify the title, not italics. I've also identified the character. Severus Snape. So this is clear identity. This is the character, and this is the series of novels, and this is basically who this person is. He is a teacher at Hogwarts in the Harry Potter series of novels. That's identification. I've also stated the character's character traits, responsibility, compassion, and cleverness. Notice that I state three, but eventually I focus mostly on his helpfulness. Right there. Snape is the Hogwarts teacher that helps Harry the most of any other. I've identified that Snape is a helper, a mentor, a teacher. And here, I connect that trait to me. Like him, I help students at McCord grow into fine young men and women. The word help is there to connect my character trait with Severus's character trait. I've also discussed the transition. Like him, I help students at McCord grow into fine young men and women. A transition phrase like this, a simple one, can link these two parts, the part that indicates me, the part that indicates Severus. Let's go to the rubric. You'll be graded on this rubric, which you have access to. The first level of the rubric is myth character understanding, and the mastery statement states, the writer demonstrates understanding of the chosen myth character's trait and develops the character's identity clearly. In that first paragraph, I've identified the character. J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter, Severus Snape, he's a teacher. So you know exactly who I'm talking about. I've also identified a series of traits and then a specific trait, the helping trait. Thus, I've accomplished mastery of the first level. The second level is the thesis statement. The thesis statement asks that I provide a clear thesis that connects him or her, being the writer, with the character on the basis of the shared trait. Sounds like some fancy language, but it's pretty simple. What this means is the final sentence of my first paragraph after I've identified the character and his trait. Show how I am like that character. Simple transition here and a clear statement. I help students at McCord grow into fine young men and women. Notice that my thesis is clear and specific. It does not simply say I am like Snape. It says like him, I help students at McCord grow into fine young men and women. So there's specific content in there, not a general and vague statement. Make sure that your thesis statement does the same. Let's move on to the second paragraph. In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry finds the Marauder's Map, a secret and magical item that helps him sneak around the school after bedtime. On one occasion, Professor Snape catches Harry and challenges him, frightening Harry into thinking he had been caught red-handed. Snape, of course, only intended to help Harry by keeping him on his toes. This is evidence. 
And when we go back to the rubric, we can see the myth character evidence criterion. Mastery asks that the writer provides clear evidence from the myth that demonstrates the myth character's trait. I've provided one piece of evidence, and that piece of evidence is paraphrase. It is a summary of something that happened within the Prisoner of Azkaban. I've quickly summarized it, and it relates to my trait because my statement says, Snape, of course, intended only to help Harry by keeping him on his toes. Notice the use of the word help again to indicate that Snape's helpfulness is key here in this discussion. Continuing to read the paragraph, I see that I acted the same way toward a student just last week. This sixth grade student was helplessly unaware of how to act before school started. Luckily, I was there to help him, just like Snape. This portion of the writing answers the next portion of the rubric. Transition to personal story. The writer provides a clear transition between the character's story and his or her own. Once again, notice that I have introduced myself connected to Snape. I state that I faced a similar experience and demonstrated a similar character trait. So, after providing evidence from the story, and you will provide evidence from your myth, you will shift into a discussion of yourself and how you experience something the same. These last few sentences introduce the story. They set up the reader for the personal story that is to follow, and the reader should be ready to hear about my history. Transition of personal story has been accomplished. The only other level of the rubric that is required is paragraph development. The writer effectively uses paragraphs to separate ideas. If you wish to effectively separate ideas with paragraphs, write a simple two-paragraph beginning. Part one could consist of two paragraphs very easily. In the first paragraph, I answer the first two aspects of the rubric, myth character understanding and thesis statement. In the next paragraph, I answer the next two levels, myth character evidence and transition of personal story. If you follow my approach in the model example, you can write a clear part one for the character connection composition. To review, the first paragraph indicates an identification of the character and the character's trait. It also includes the thesis statement, a connection between the character and myself. In paragraph two, I provide evidence for that character trait in the character, being specific about the evidence. I also make a transition into my own story, focusing on myself for what is to come in the rest of the paper. If you can do this, you can accomplish mastery on all levels of the rubric for part one. As you have questions, please bring those questions to class. Write, experiment, try, and share, and you can succeed.